Welcome everyone to the next game in my How Many Games Can Have the Word Horizon in the Name While Remaining Distinguishable series. Today we're going over Horizon Zero Dawn, a previously PlayStation exclusive that was finally allowed to roam in the free range that is PC gaming back in 2020. As usual, if you just want the settings I recommend without context, rhyme, or reason, then skip to the timestamp on screen now. If you'd prefer to know how I got to those settings, then please watch on. Today, I have two pieces of news. First, there's a new Discord server that everyone can join. Originally, it was Patreon only, but I hadn't realized that there would be such a high demand for an open server. Regardless, please feel free to join the server using the link on screen. I've also left a link in the description below. The second piece of news is that the Discord server has a patron-only section where I'll be sharing extra news, helping people out a little more directly, and maybe even having a hangout once in a while. If any of that sounds interesting to you, I definitely encourage you to check it out. Lastly, before moving on, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and ring the bell to help get this content to more people. Alright, let's start off with a new section that I'll call System Status where I give you the exact versions of each component I'm using so you have the best chance to replicate my results. Here was my system status during testing. I have a Q3 512GB Steam Deck, SteamOS 3.3.2, Proton 7.0-4, Mesa 22.2.0 Devel, and VKD3D 2.6.0. Now that we're over the preface, let's start with the baseline. Nothing too surprising here, as presets go higher, numbers go lower. The only thing that's odd is that the lowest two presets also have horrible lows. This means that the game probably isn't using the hardware properly, but we'll dig into that a bit later. Looking into what the bottleneck may be, we can see that all the presets use the CPU very equally and don't come near maxing it out. Wherever the bottleneck is, it's not this. Moving on to GPU clock speed, we can see that, unsurprisingly, Ultimate maxes out the GPU and the lower settings don't. What I believe to be happening here is that the clocks aren't rising to the occasion quickly enough, likely making Horizon a prime candidate for GPU pinning on lower presets especially. Lastly here in the bottleneck section, we can see that all the presets use similar amounts of memory. I can confirm that whatever wasn't used by RAM was taken by VRAM, absolutely filling all the physical memory. This tells me that both the Swap Fix and VRAM expansion are potential candidates for improvement here, and I look forward to seeing how much they help. A quick reminder that if you want to know how to do any of the fixes I mention here today, you should go watch my video, Easy and Safe Health and Performance Boosts. I've linked it in the description and placed an annotation on the video if you're interested. Moving on to using 4GB of VRAM, and we can see some... interesting results. On the Favor Performance preset, the lows got higher by 22% and 97%, but the highs were 3% lower. On the Favor Quality preset, we can see the exact opposite, with the lows being 6% and 48% lower, while the highs were 9% higher. These results are confusing to say the least, so we'll see what further testing shows us. Here, we can see that the frame times on the results using 4GB of VRAM are much more consistent than the baseline even on favor quality where we'd expect them to be less consistent based on the previous graphs. Reverting to using 1GB of VRAM and resizing the swap to 16GB with a swappiness of 1 shows that the game isn't constrained by memory, at least not RAM. We might have more luck with 4GB of VRAM added in, but these results are all within margin of error and looked identical on screen. Incorporating both 4GB of VRAM and the swap fix does exactly as we'd expect it to, the best of both worlds. The 0.1% and 1% lows are 36% and 25% higher on the favor performance preset, and the 97th percentile is 6% higher. As for the favor quality preset, the 0.1% lows are 11% higher, and all the other results are within margin of error. Overall, it definitely seems worth it to perform both fixes, so we'll use these as a baseline from here on out. I wanted to look a little more into why lows are so low, and honestly it just seems like the frame times are all over the place. There are numerous lag spikes and they seem very random. So as a first for the channel, let's show a few graphs at the same time. All the lag spikes seem to be when the GPU was the least busy. 
To me, this screams that the GPU is being highly reactive rather than proactive when it comes to clock speeds. In situations like this, the following happens. There is a frame that is easy to render. As a result, the GPU thinks that the next frame will also likely be easy. The GPU sets its clock speed very low to save power and manage heat, since the next frame will be easy anyway. The next frame absolutely destroys the GPU with work. The GPU realizes that it needs to clock higher, but it also needs to get this next frame out ASAP. The GPU clocks higher and gets the frame out, but not on time. That process is what's happening each time you see a really long frame and a really low core clock at the same time. This is exactly where GPU pinning is most effective, and that leads me to our next result. Doing something a little different this time, let's look at the frame time graph first. As we can see, most of the frame rates are the same, but GPU pinning got rid of the horrible lag spike seen in prior results. There are still a few slow frames, but it's nothing absolutely horrible like before. Switching to the normal summary graph, we can see that the 0.1% lows are 116% higher on favor performance, which is absolutely astounding. On the same preset, 1% lows are 8% higher, and the 97th percentile results are actually 3% lower, probably because we're taking some wattage from the CPU. Looking at the favor quality preset, all results are within margin of error except for 0.1% lows, which are 14% higher with the GPU pinned. Overall, it looks like pinning was the right call, and the game seems to suffer from inconsistent GPU scheduling after all. For the next round of tests, I wanted to do something a little different. Each of these use the same settings we had before. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file, and a swappiness of 1. The first section is swapping in Proton GE for the stock 7.0-4. The second result is actually from the last section, so treat that as a baseline. The third result is with Proton GE and pinning the GPU. And the last result is with Proton GE pinning the GPU and disabling two CPU cores to test if the issue is power delivery. We can see that the inclusion of Proton GE is actually harming lows badly, with the best results not able to touch Proton 7.0-4's performance. On the flip side, highs with Proton GE are much higher. Unfortunately, the gameplay felt worse, and none of these options ended up being favorable compared to the previous revision. Next up, I wanted to test FSR. I chose a fairly high resolution of 1024 by 720 and used the FSR balance profile, while also keeping the GPU pinned at 1600 MHz to see just how far we could push FPS. As you can see, I was not disappointed. Averages rose 18% and 25%, and 97th percentile results rose 19% and 15% for the favor performance and favor quality presets respectively. As for lows, the favor performance preset rose 14% for 1% lows and 19% for 0.1% lows, just barely scraping over the 30 FPS mark. The favor quality preset had an increase of 18% for 1% lows and 0.1% lows were within margin of error. As it seemed like we hit another bottleneck, I wanted to share the relevant graphs. Here we can see that the CPU is barely touching 80% utilization, so this definitely is not the bottleneck. The GPU load graph shows that none of the presets ever truly top out across the board. And even the memory doesn't truly fill up. I think that, unfortunately, we might be looking at an engine limitation. Try as I might, I couldn't press through this performance wall, so I think that we'll need to wait on Proton or the Mesa drivers to update in order to get a better result here. As usual, here's a list of things I tried, but didn't do any good. ZRAM led to identical performance. CPU pinning at 2, 2.5, 3, and 3.5 GHz was worse to identical performance. Disabling 2, 4, and 6 CPU cores led to worse to identical performance. Disabling SMT had worse performance. Fan curve tuning had identical performance. Disabling shader cache had worse performance. Disabling eSync had worse performance, and disabling F-Sync had worse performance. And thus, we arrive at the recommended settings section. A few notes before I get into the presets. First, it seems like lag spikes are basically inevitable in this game, even with every tweak I can throw at it. We can reduce their frequency quite a bit, but it seems like the engine has a limitation that causes this to happen on a regular PC as well. This is anecdotal, but when my wife and I played this on our Windows PCs, we had the same issue. 
despite both of them completely obliterating the system requirements. I searched online and found dozens of threads echoing the same sentiment. This is unfortunately a poorly optimized port, and many people just aren't able to run it at the settings their hardware can actually handle. With those caveats in mind, let's get to my recommendations. First up, as usual, is the battery saver preset. This one is meant to prolong battery life as much as possible, which will be tricky in a game that has stubborn lows like Horizon. If you won't be near an outlet for a long, long time, until Touchdown brings you round again to find, then use these settings. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file, swap tendency set to 1, in-game, use a resolution of 960 by 600 limit to 30 FPS, use the favor performance preset, set FSR to quality, and use a HUD scale of 1.2. In the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to 60 Hz, set a TDP limit of 6 watts, and pin the GPU at 600 MHz. This gave me a total playtime of 2 hours and 57 minutes. Two notes about this one. First, the HUD scale is larger because the small screen scaling in Horizon makes it completely unreadable with or without FSR. The menus are fine, but the HUD is unusable at the default size. And second, you might need to alter the GPU pinning up or down 100 MHz depending on the scene you're in. I found 600 to be a good middle ground, but in action-packed scenes I found that sometimes 700 helped keep it a little more stable. Next up is the fast or smooth preset. The focus here is to get as close to a locked 60 as possible, even if graphics take a hit. If you want your deck to cosplay as Lightning McQueen and become speed, then use the following settings. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file, swap tendency set to 1, in-game use a resolution of 960 by 600 limit to 60 FPS, use the favor performance preset, Set FSR to quality, set the HUD scale to 1.2, in the deck overlay, set refresh rate to 60, and pin the GPU at 1600 MHz. This gave me a total playtime of 1 hour and 42 minutes. Third, we have the recommended preset. This one tries to strike a good balance between fidelity and frame rate, typically targeting a locked 40. If you want to hit that golden 40 like my man the deckverse, Use the following settings. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file, swap tendency set to 1, in-game, use the native resolution, limit to 40 FPS, enable adaptive performance targeting 50 FPS, use the original preset, change anti-aliasing to FXAA, set shadows to low, in the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to 40 Hz, and pin the GPU at 1600 MHz. This gave me a total playtime of 1 hour and 49 minutes. As a quick note about the adaptive performance targeting 50 FPS rather than 40, I found that it seemed to reduce a decent amount of lag spikes you would otherwise get. I replicated the results 4 to 5 times and it seemed consistent each time, so I definitely recommend leaving it slightly higher than you actually want to aim for. Lastly, we have the prettiest preset. We aim for a locked 30, but crank those graphics to 11, trying to simulate a console experience. If you want your deck to become the very thing it swore to destroy, use the following settings. 4GB of VRAM, a 16GB swap file, swap tendency set to 1, in-game, use the native resolution, limit to 30fps, set textures to high, set model quality to medium, set anti-stropic filtering to high, Set shadows to medium, set reflections to medium, set clouds to medium, set ambient occlusion to high, and set anti-aliasing to FXAA. In the deck overlay, set the refresh rate to 60, and pin the GPU at 1600 MHz. This gave me a total playtime of 2 hours and 1 minute. Well, there you have it. Horizon Zero Dawn optimized as well as I think is currently possible on the Steam Deck. Unfortunately, this seems to be another case where the game refuses to use all the hardware available to it, and the GPU scheduling is very lackluster. Horizon has remained in this incredibly inconsistent state on PC for over two years, so I'm unsure if we'll ever see a patch to fix it, but I would like nothing more than that. As always, don't forget to... 
click on the like button so you can like the video while you like my content, exhibit style. Subscribe to the teachings of Gaben and praise the deck. Eat a bell pepper, only to learn that it contains a photo of the bell below a YouTube video, proving that even nature likes both Kinder Eggs and this channel. Leave a short commentary on why you think Peter Piper picked a pack of pickled peppers. Is Piper a profession, or is it his last name? How are the peppers pickled if they're still in the bush? I have so many questions. With all that said, endless thanks to the kind people who allow me to dedicate as much of my time to this as I do. Starting with Patreon, we have Verge4469, Mitch, A Zero Fail, Frankie Odgers, Pronesis, Lemon, Brian D, Yi Luo, Pi K, Madam Slug, Spiffman, Bradley Carter, Dylan Manuel, and Jan Klisch. For YouTube channel members, we have VV and Eugene Brednev. And lastly, we have these legends who donated to the cause with a super thanks. VV, George, Nike Scar, Biffman42, Alphabet, LNX Extreme, Sacker Z, and Krishan Morjaria. Sorry if I messed up anyone's name. Thank you all, and have an amazing day.